Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course, not possible without the continued support of my longest standing major sponsor, Shannon's Insurance. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call on 134646 for a quote. In fact, Shannon's Insurance can offer you a 10% multi-policy discount if you add your home insurance to your current car or bike insurance. Now, only a company full of enthusiasts would come up with cover such as that. You can look at Shannon's online at shannons.com.au. And while you're there, you'll see a whole array of ways as to how they can help you. And you can also sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club. There is no doubt about it. If you own a classic just like this, it has to be with Shannon's Insurance. And on today's show, as a part of my six-week stay here in Pennsylvania, United States of America, covering some of the world's largest car shows, I proudly bring you the 2013 Carlisle All GM Nationals. You know, when it comes to car shows, Carlisle Events has it all. There are many events each year catering to your particular likings. The events are spread out, easy to access, ground staff are friendly, and when it comes to vehicles, no matter what event you choose, you'll see at least a thousand of the very best to at least whet your appetite, or to potentially drain your bank account if you choose to find one that may be for sale. Well, how good is this? This is the car corral section at Carlisle Events, where the private entrants rock up and hopefully sell their rides. Let's go take a closer look, but be warned at home, as some scenes may depress you. Here at the GM Nationals, you'll get to experience what is known as Cackle Fest. It's your chance to sit in a drag car. We have a 484 cubic inch Hemi V8 here. What an experience. Bruce, welcome to the show. Thanks, it's great to be here, Fletch. Mate, uh, I've got to wear the earplugs, put the earmuffs on. You guys just don't seem to. You must be just permanently deaf, are you? What? <laughs> huh? Hanging hang around these things, it's unbelievable. The vibration just goes right through you. It's hard to explain. It's been a thrill for the last 40 years for me. What sort of uh, ET times do we are we looking at with this particular car, Bruce? This is a seven, 1979 version funny car, but it ran 220 miles an hour in, in the six second ET brain, range in a quarter mile. I mean, sitting back there and just holding the steering wheel, just a, while it's idling and giving it a rev, just imagining what it would be like, it's, it's quite intimidating. Yeah, it's like falling down a mine shaft when you leave the starting line. Uh, the cars now leave at about 5 Gs. Uh, this car probably left at 3.5 or 4 Gs. But the other thing is when you pull the parachutes at the end of the run, you get negative Gs. And it's about the same, 3, 4, 5 Gs negative. It tries to pull your eyeballs right out of the sockets. It was described to me once, it would be like sitting at the traffic lights and being hit up the rear at like 70 or 80 miles an hour from a standing start. That's pretty accurate. Sounds like a heap of fun. We took the body off just so you could sit in here just like the NHRA boys do at the national events when we warm them up. I'll tell you what, Bruce, it's a tight fit in here. I'm glad you're here and we're having a good time. All right. Well, I think the... <laughs> um, Bruce, I said that it's a tight fit in here. 
Oh, okay, a tight fit. I must be hard of hearing for some reason. I think you might. Excuse me. If you want to drive it, you're just going to have to slide in there. Bruce, thank you very much for bringing these cars along. Sensational highlight to the GM Nationals here for 2013. Thanks for being on Classic Restos, the Carlisle edition of episodes as well. Thanks, Bruce. Nice talking to you, Fletch. Here at the 2013 Carlisle All GM Nationals, you're never too sure what you're going to find. Now, although these Buicks don't host the traditional chrome bumper bars of yesteryear, they are, however, a very interesting ride. Here we have Tyler. He's a walking encyclopedia, this guy. He's also the events manager here for GM for 2013. How are you doing, Tyler? Oh, I'm just great, Fletch. Thanks for having me on the show. That's okay. Now, look, you're a wealth of knowledge when it comes to these GNXs. What do they mean to you? Well, the Buick GNX I've always found to be an amazing car because it's really a perfect example of a sleeper because it's a Buick that can really, really go fast. So I've always found them amazing just for their unassuming nature overall. The 3.8 litre V6 is also familiar uh, to Australia and New Zealand as well. Uh, it's a good V6. You, um, you bung a hairdryer on them and they just go so well. <laughs> That's for sure. I think uh, the 3.8s they put in these, they can take quite a beating and a lot of fun. Now Tyler, being a young guy, what do the classic cars mean to you? Because we're talking of a different realm here, obviously being in the 1980s. Well, for me, um, one of the things I always appreciate is the history behind the cars why they were created, who created them, who they were marketed towards, and then also just generally the styling. I think cars from uh, over 20 years ago look better than a lot of the stuff that's made today. Well, there's a whole uh, array of Buicks here, G and Xs here in Building Y. You walk in here, you expect to see maybe one, two or three, but no, being Carlisle, there's a whole row. It's just so typical, isn't it? Absolutely. We always try to go over the top with anything we do. Thanks, Tyler. And on that note, mate, congratulations. Uh, fantastic job done for 2013. Uh, Carlisle All GM Nationals. Well done. Thank you so much, Fletch. Get up close and personal with this plastic wonder. As you know, nothing ran quick from factory back in the 1980s compared to the golden years of raw performance. Except if you own one of these. A 1987 GNX and it's a Buick. Gotta say, this Buick took on a tough look. Like the guy in high school wearing the black leather jacket with his hair slicked back leaning against a wall. Someone you don't want to mess with. This Buick hosted the 3.8 litre V6 that we are familiar with in Australia and in New Zealand. There was 276 horsepower on tap, breathing through a McLaren tuned turbo, reaching 60 miles per hour from a standing start in just 4.7 seconds. So much for the grandpa image lounge room style turnpike cruisers as we commonly knew by Buick. They made some tremendous performance cars back in the 1960s and early 70s. It's nice to see a little tradition carried through when other makes ducked out and hid in the side streets. I hope you're really enjoying today's episode of the 2013 Carlisle All GM Nationals. Thanks of course to Carlisle Events and my major sponsor Shannon's Insurance. Give them a call on 134646 for a quote or visit them at shannons.com.au. Back with more after this. Well, here we go. Time for Joe with a gorgeous 1969 SS Camaro. How are you, Joe? I'm very good, Fletch. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You enjoying yourself? Oh, yes, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. How do you like the uh, GM Nationals so far for 2013 here at Carlisle? Good, very good. I come every year. Do you? Yeah. How many years have you been coming? Uh, probably about the seventh. Tra do you travel from far? Um, 100 miles, oh. Reading area. Yeah. Yep. Do you drive the Camaro? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, good. yep. Isn't that good? Isn't that good to see a classic car not only being owned, but you got to drive them, haven't you, buddy? Drive them, yes, you do yeah. got to drive them. Now, tell us about this car. Look at the red. Isn't it the most beautiful red? It's a gorgeous colour. What is the name of that red? It's torch Red. It's actually Torch. It is a GM colour. Yeah. Okay, it's moved. it was used on a lot of newer GMs. Yeah. Yep. It looks absolutely sensational sitting here in the paddock. Now look, it's a it's a knockout car, Joe. What's the story? How long have you had it? I've had it since 99 and I restored the whole car myself and, and friends. Wow. And my brother-in-law painted it. Yeah. So, and When you got the car, how was it? It was in pretty good shape. It was green when I got it and it wasn't bad. So yeah. I had a pretty good car to work with. So you kind of had a bit of a head start. Yes, yes, but it still took five years to do it. Yeah. You know, it takes time. So, yeah. Uh, 
and the investment of time, but in the end, look what you've ended up with. You've got this beautiful car. It must be great to drive. Yes, I get a lot of compliments on it, and uh, I go to a lot of shows. I go to shows every weekend with it. Joe, I love the houndstooth interior. That's a real nice trim you got going in there. Thank you. Yes, it, it, it gives it a different look. It, it really does, you know? It just with the red, it just, it, 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 you know, just gives it that look, you know? There's something about a Camaro, especially one in this condition. They are really a stunning car, aren't they? Okay, what's lurking up under the hood? Tell us the deal there, Joe. It's a 350 with some aluminum heads. It's basically stock. It has a small cam in it. I try to keep everything pretty much stock. Your luminant heads are good. I mean, you know, I mean, they're not from they're not from the '60s, but it doesn't matter. It's just a little bit of a tweak. A little bit, just enough, just to give a little bit of edge. So I, got, I got them on my car at home, so it's okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Joe. Thanks for catching up. Uh, it's been great talking to you. Love your car. It's the uh, the first Camaro that's on the show here this weekend on Classic Restos. I appreciate it. Thank you, Fletch. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. One nice thing about Carlisle events is that it's female friendly, not always about the guys. In fact, if you lose your wife or your partner, and if you care, you may find her in here. This is the Women's Oasis, a relaxing non-automotive retreat. Personally, I couldn't think of anything worse, but the ladies love it. There's jewellery, handmade crafts, unique clothing and even beauty products. You can brighten up your smile with Bleach Bright and even enjoy an absolute massage. Ah yes, the old home away from chrome. It might be nice, but personally I still prefer four wheels and a seat. You know, it's very lovely here in the Women's Oasis and with nearly 300 TV episodes up on the board it's good to see that I'm surrounded by fans. Time for Melvin on today's show now. Hello, Melvin. Good. How are you, Fletch? I'm great. Yourself? Uh, fine. Yeah. Oh, man, but I'm fine. You're old. How old are you? 75. 75. Get out of here. Yeah, 75 in February. Born in 38. Yeah, you got to love it. Don't you love it, eh? These guys out with their cars. Speaking of which, a 1965 GTO. What is it about these cars? There's just something about it. The lines, their shape, they are just amazing, aren't they? They're like a good-looking woman. They're beautiful. You just can't get enough of it. Can't get enough. <laughs> no, I my car. I've had it for eight years. I enjoy the car. I probably go to probably three car shows a week, and that's what old men do. And uh, I, I run into the same people there. Melvin, you, you've got to stop calling yourself old because I mean, while you, you're running around in a '65 GTO, you've got a 400 up front. You, 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 you're like a 19-year-old. Look at you. I mean, not only that, this is a convertible car as well, right? I've had it eight years. Uh, I did a lot of work to it. Um, it's pretty much done. Gorgeous color. Gorgeous color. I just put a new exhaust system on, which is extremely loud and extremely good. And I love that part. Yeah, I just, my <laughs> wife asked me once in a while, she said, aren't you ever going to grow up? Yeah. And I said, I don't think so. Well, you know, growing old is mandatory, growing up is optional. Uh, yes, yeah. I, I'm going to use that. I'm going to tell her that from now on. Let's have a look at the interior. The interior is beautiful as well. I mean, uh, dark color on the outside, light on the inside, nice transition, class, lots of style. It's a lot of style. It's, uh, the, 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 the inside is, is uh, what it should have been like originally. It's a cream power. A couple of little different things. You, you've changed the steering wheel. That's a little different. Yeah, it's a little different. That came with that steering wheel. I seem to like it. I keep looking at it, or buying a wooden one that goes in there, but it's a larger one, and I like that little steering wheel. It's a funny thing, you can go two ways. I like the bigger wheels, they're thin, but they were often criticized, couldn't get enough grip on them back in their day, but I like the, the big, thin wheel. But the way you've gone there, you've, you've got some good grip. I'm gonna totally change the subject here. I'm gonna look out back. Die-cast taillights. Now, where have the days gone? Die-cast taillights. You know, a car would cost a million dollars to now come with die-cast taillights. Yes, yes, it would be. It's a very, very expensive. Uh, those those tires that I have on wheels and I have on there are a friend of mine that repairs cars, Ken Snyder. He came up one day, did some work on my car, and I went up to get it. And he said, he said, come on up. He said, uh, the car's done. And I went up there and he's going to run it. I, I, I said, what'd you do that for? He said, it looks a lot better with that one, doesn't it? I said, well, where's my old ones at? Ah, I put them in that Firebird. I said, so what's the cost here? Well, of course, a thousand bucks. I said, Take them off. Social Security check didn't come in yet, and uh, <laughs> he said, "You don't need a Social Security check." Anyhow, he, I left them on there. I got a good price out of him. 
And, uh, and uh, he said this will make it an A1 car instead of an A car. He said you get more trophies, which here you got a $45,000 car and you get an $8 trophy. Yeah. Go, and make your, go and have one made yourself and engrave your own name That's on good. it. All right, lovely talking to you, Melvin. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time and, and, and good luck with the, with, with the ladies. Oh, oh yeah, no, for my wife. <laughs> Thank My wife had to work today, so yes, probably a good thing. That's a good thing. Oh yeah, it is. Th thanks, well, you're you're a good guy. Keep up the keep the dream alive and the tradition going. I love the GTA. Beautiful car. It is a good car. It's an it's a neat car to drive. It it's noisy. It's fast. Yeah. It, it looks good. Nice. I reckon when you were when you were a kid, you would have been a bugger. Oh, a bugger would have been it. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if I was a kid and had this, I, it wouldn't be safe. The girls wouldn't be safe. That's all there is to it. 75 years of age. Get out of here. Yeah. See you later, mate. The college town of Carlisle, Pennsylvania is an absolutely beautiful tourist destination. If you would like to see some of this amazing area of the United States in conjunction with one of your favourite car shows, you may be looking at joining a Fletch tour. We are taking expressions of interest now for 2014. Send me an email via classicrestos.com.au. If you enjoy your favourite TV show Classic Restos, the DVD boxed sets along with other Classic Restos merchandise is available at classicrestos.com.au. And while you're there, check out the major sponsors as well. Hope you're enjoying the 2013 Carlisle All GM Nationals. Back with more in just a moment. Oh, moving through the 2013 Carlisle All Jam Nationals, it's just getting better and better. Absolutely stunning stuff. This. How are you, Paul? I'm fine. How about yourself, Fletch? I'm great. I'm great. I'm, I'm just lost for words when I see a car like this. A 1960 two-door original Bonneville. Original Bonneville, yes. Original paint, original chrome. The roof is different. But the paint is all original, the chrome is all original, the interior is all original, and I put the original bias tires back on it. <laughs> so. Tell us, Paul, where did you find a car like this? I found this car in Greensburg, about a 15-mile drive from my house. The guy was a tinner. He bought the car from his brother when he went to Korea, and uh, he sold it to him for $700. <laughs> the car cost $4,130 4, $4, or 4137 dollars and he sold it to his brother for seven hundred dollars. Keep in mind, four thousand one hundred dollars back in nineteen sixty. That was a, an incredible amount of money. Oh, yeah, absolutely, it was. I couldn't afford it, and I wanted to buy one. <laughs> couldn't afford it then. Never thought I'd pay fifteen thousand dollars for it and have to fix it up, the mechanical parts anyway. Paul, well, you, you've still you got yourself a bargain. I mean, in fact, I think you stole it at that well, in a that little price. Bit like that, yeah, just a little um, bit. Do you know about the original owner? Like, what did he do for a job? Well, Carl, uh, Carmen was a, uh, a tenor. I don't know what Joe was. They were brothers, and uh, Joe had the car first. And he, I don't know what he did, but I know his brother. When he got it, he was a tenor. So he he drove the car. He was a little Italian fella, and he had cushion underneath him and two behind. Of course, he tore up the flywheel and the pressure plate all that stuff had to be replaced so he just parked it in 74 what was in 72 they had inspected in 74 the Bonneville is such a strong brand too it's a strong model I mean yeah, it's, it's yeah, a it's yeah. a great sounding name a Bonneville isn't it the something about 1960 it was a great great seller engine up front what size is it Paul it's a 389 it's, uh, right now uh, we had to rebuild it so I the guy said he built it out reboard it to 400 blocks so gets a little bigger but it's a 389 block that's awesome ah, where do we go next we look at the interior what, what an incredible interior the dashboards on these Bonnevilles they, they're on their own they're just that's what I love about every make and model of from the 50s and 60s they all had their own signature styling didn't they yes they did they had their own style this one was plastered with wax from the wax in it and I had to get a uh, uh, ear things what do you call them cotton swabs and wax and clean them Spent about four hours on the dash. <laughs> even even the, uh, the the leather and the vinyl combination, the seating. Uh, yeah, that, was all, that was all clean too, Fletch. But it's original from 1960. Yes, 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 it is. It's original, yes. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind 10 bucks for every time there's a butt that's been sitting on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> now, let's have a look out back across the top of the rear quarters now. The Laurentians, the Bonnevilles, the, the shape. Oh, that, that tunnel styling across the top of the rear quarters, that, that is amazing. Yes, I worked for a company for 40 years. As a matter of fact, in 1960, I helped make panels for this car. Now, the reason why they're all bent like that was to keep the buckles out of the car, on the long car. So when they put a buckle, a bend in it, 
kept the buckles out and made it look like a sharper car, which was a good idea. Gave it some strength. Gave it strength. Yeah, it was a good idea. Uh, it's an awesome car. Paul, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for being on today's show. I love it. I love it too. <laughs> We're in shock. That's the trouble. You fall in love with everything you find here. It's just, it's just, just incredible stuff. The amount of cars that GM made, they, they really did some incredible stuff, they didn't sure they? Sure did. They sure did. They never made them to last long in those days, but today they do. Tell you what, you know, I reckon they're doing a pretty good job. These yes. these cars are they're what? They're doing a wonderful job now, yes. 40 and 50 years old, aren't they? Yes, they are, yes, yes. Okay, Paul, well, nice talking to you, and I like your hat, too. Oh, thank you. I do that to keep the sun off me. <laughs> I'm not really a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> Look after yourself, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Flex. Moving through, here we are in the Oldsmobile row now. We have Willard. How are you, Willard? Very good, Fletch. That's the way. Look at this. <laughs> oh, uh, another stunning car. We're back in the like the the Elvis Presley, uh, Marilyn Monroe era here. Nineteen fifty-five Oldsmobile. Yes, yes, it is, Fletch. Well, uh, what's the story with it? I uh, bought that car about uh, eleven years ago. A fellow of mine, a uh, friend of mine, had redone it and uh, turned around, and I finished it off. Whole interior needed done. The car had already been painted and all new chrome put on it. Uh, it only had uh, like 24,000 miles on it when I got it. So it's in pretty good shape. You've got yourself a gold mine here, haven't you? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like to drive? It drives very good. It's, you don't feel the tire strips. Yeah. yeah. It makes you realise, like, if a car can drive like that in 2013, how it must have been back in its day in 1955. It was like driving a Cadillac. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, oh, I've got my opinions on that, and I reckon if you were blindfolded, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. No, you wouldn't. You couldn't tell at all. Yeah. No. Nope. Um, the interior is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, we're, we're looking 1955 period correct interior here in outstanding condition. I think these top level cars, I don't think they had the ratio of families that used to go through them. I think they had less opportunity to, to get damaged. I mean, they, they weren't the sort of car that a salesman would have driven. They weren't getting used every single day of the week in stop and start traffic. I think that's why there's so many top end cars still around. Basically, yes, and this one had been owned by an old lady who lived in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, and uh, she'd never put any miles on it at all, I and mean, she passed away, her son didn't want it, so he sold it. Wow. Yeah. And that's often the case. That's often the case. Well, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. This is really uh, a knockout car here in the Oldsmobile line. They're all beautiful cars, but uh, this one made the grade for the TV show, my friend. Okay, thank you, Sage. Thank you, sir. Sure thing. Talk about a car ahead of its time. Looks great in 2013, let alone how it would have looked back in the day in 55. Up under the hood, a 324 cubic inch V8, boasting 200 horsepower, and you just have to love the Continental kit out back. After walking around Carlisle events all day looking at the sensational GM vehicles, what a way to round off the day, to head out here to the Quarter Aces drag away. There's no set classes here. It's a pretty laid back affair. It's where the local guys run what they brung. I hope you've enjoyed just some of the 2013 Carlisle All GM Nationals on this week's episode of Classic Restos. Don't worry, there's more coming up on next week's show. Till then, I'm Fletch. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV. And episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au.
Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts.